Okay, let's go to the word. Uh, I have a PowerPoint. Right now it's 11. I don't know what time you are leaving. <laughs> but I'm ready. Now nah, <laughs> I'm ready to preach. I will, very, I will try to be very quick. But I want to tell you something that the Lord has been dealing with me. And I have a PowerPoint. Maybe someone is going to help me. But I want to tell you, there is a great commission that the Lord gave to us. But sometimes that great commission has been the great omission. And the Lord sent me uh, to you this time because he wants you to know that he wants, to be part, he wants you to be part of that great commission. So you are committed. You have a commission and you have to do something. And sometimes we believe that, well, it's just only the pastor, it's Pastor Jeb and some of the elders in the church. They are the ones that are commissioned. No, let me tell you, you are commissioned to go and preach the word of God. And here's the scripture. The, it says, I'm sorry that my English is not very good and my reading is not very good. All the time I'm speaking Spanish, but I'm trying to do my best, okay? <laughs> Can you understand me? Okay. If not, ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, give me, please, the revelation to understand this crazy Mexican. Okay. Okay. Look what the Bible says. This is, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe the things that I have commanded you, and I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That's right. That's what the Bible says. I want to tell you the next one. We are all called to be missionaries. It's not just only one. It's everybody, all of us. We are called to be missionaries. In the book of Acts, it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Mexico, but to the all earth. Okay? It's not just only some places. It's everywhere. And the Lord says, you will receive power. When he promised the power, is because it's something that is not in us. It's not because I am very good or I have a lot of skills. It is the power that comes from God. It's the same power that the dynamite has. It's the same power that is in us. You will explode and you will receive something from God that you don't know that you have it. But suddenly you will be, you will see yourself preaching in the different places, not only here in the States, but everywhere because he has promised that he is going to give you power. You have the power of God. Okay. I'm going to center in a, in a scripture. It's in Psalms in, in the chapter 62. That is where I'm going to be referring. And in that scripture, in the second verse, the next one, it says that you may be known on earth, your salvation among the nations. That is the purpose of God. His name needs to be known all over, everywhere. All the nations, all the people, that is the purpose, that he will be known everywhere. And we are committed to that. That is the commission that we have. We, it is not just only for us that we feel comfortable, that we have some friends here, that some people that they love us, some people that they take care of us. No, no, no. The, the, the thing is that the Lord wants everybody, everywhere to be known. And you know what? Now that we know him, we have the responsibility to go and preach to everybody. That is the purpose. But it will be through three different points. Number one. In uh, Psalms 61, 67, number one, uh, the first thing that we need to show is mercy. Yeah. We need to be merciful. God, be merciful to us. That is what the scripture says. Let me read it to you uh, on Psalms 61, 67, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read. It says, God, be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Those will be the, train, the three points that I'm going to, to be talking to you. Number one is to be merciful. God is merciful. And if God is merciful, you know what? We need to be merciful. And I start looking around. What is merciful? Well, in Latin, it comes from the root mercy, miser. Uh, from that word, it comes misery. 
uh, or someone that has a uh, misfortune. And uh, cordis, cordis comes from the word ca cardio or from the heart. Uh, and it refers to feeling with the heart the misfortune of others. That is the first thing that we are going to let God be known to everybody when we are merciful. And I'm sorry, guys, to tell you, because I am Mexican and we have a different culture, but sometimes we don't care about the people. We care about ourselves. My family, my wife, my children, my car, my house, and the rest, I don't care. I don't care. But you know what? Number one, we will be known when we will be to, uh, feeling what the people that are in misfortune, that they are in mercy, uh, in misery, sorry, uh, they are going to receive mercy from us. It's, that's what it says, to feel in uh, with the heart the misfortune of others. Praise God, America has been blessed. You are totally blessed, really. I want to tell you. Uh, I was driving uh, uh, and uh, on the way going to spend the night and coming back this morning, I saw what a beautiful road do you have. The people that have been there in Mexico, they will tell you, there are holes in the holes. <laughs> Everywhere. But you know what? You have beautiful roads, four-line roads, no problem. And you got a lot of different farm uh, communities, and everything is, is, is a blessing here. I can see it. the way you think. We are in a restaurant. They are not going to give you just only a little piece of milk. They will give you the whole bottle and everything, you know. You are totally blessed. And praise God for that. I praise God for that. And I praise God for this center, faith center, because you have that in your, in, in your veins. It, this is what Pastor John has been giving to you, and you are receiving that. But you know what? I'm sure that you know someone that has a misery around you and that you need to show mercy to him. Someone. Find someone and invite him to your house. Give something to it. Buy a hamburger for him. Something. Do something. Because they don't have the fortune that you have and that we have. And they are misfortune. And we need to be merciful with them. In Greek, this word comes from aleos. And it says, a compassion, a treatment above merit. Yeah, many people, they don't deserve that. But you know what? There is something that God has put in us. We have mercy on them. Because God has been merciful to us. When nobody can give us neither one dollar, the Lord gave his own life for you. And that's why you are here. Because he gave his life, his only son. He gave his only son to you. And you know what? Right now, that's why we have that merciful heart. Don't close your heart. Don't close your eyes. Don't move to another side because maybe they don't have the fortune that you have. But because God, God has been good to you, it's the same way that you can be merciful to some other people. Okay? Even if, when they don't deserve. And also, the name, uh, the name merciful in Hebrew comes from Raham. And uh, Raham, it means to pamper, to caress, to pity to have affection, to have compassion, to have heart. Even some people think that this, this word Raham comes from the same movement in, in, your, in your belly. And it is what a mother feels for her children. Uh, I've been talking to my wife right now, my daughter, my youngest daughter. She has a newborn baby. The baby has two months. And her life has changed totally. She was, you know, she was... I'm sorry to say this, but this is the truth. She was a mess. She was never at home. All the time she was here, there, doing business, this, that, all the time. And you know what? We can't believe what she is facing right now. The other day we went to take someone to eat because it was a birthday. And I invited her and said, let's go. I said, no, I don't, I don't want to go. Why not? You don't have money? I said, I'm going to pay. I said, no, it's not because of that. It's because... Uh, the water is not very good, and then I need to be with my daughter. I said to Rachel, I can't believe this is not my daughter. It's totally different. But you know what? She takes the responsibility to be taking care of the baby. And if we take care of someone like that, you know what? 
you are going to change their lives. Because God has been merciful with you. You have the same mercy with them. And you are going to change that just only to have mercy. It's not because they deserve it. It's not because they are having good to you. It's because God has been merciful with me. So I'm going to be merciful with them. And then that life will be changed. I said in Mexico many times. Sometimes we Christians are so funny because we are more religious people than maybe many others. And we start hitting them. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. And you know what? They will not come to Christ like that. No, never. Maybe your husband is a drunkard. Hey, the drunkards don't go to heaven. Neither to your church. So don't Start beating them. Let the Lord work with them. And then the things are going to change. Because he has the whole power to change anybody's life. Don't worry about if he's going to change or not. What you have to worry about is, am I merciful? Mm -mm. I need to continue. I need to continue because I know I'm touching some hard points that sometimes it's not easy to touch. But, yeah, we need to do. I'm going to put the, the other slide, please. I want to show you this because just only on January, it is very recently, January the 6th, you know, in Mexico, we celebrate Los Reyes Magos. Maybe you, you don't have this here in, Mex uh, in the States. But in Mexico, it's a big fiesta, especially for the children. Because supposedly there are three different kings that they go to, to, to see Jesus and they bring a lot of gifts. But we made a big fiesta because it is a good day. It's not because we believe in the three kings. No, no, no. But you know what? Uh, this is a lady, uh, I mean, a, a little girl that she is like a mimic or something like that. She's not very well. But you know what? She came to, to this party and in that party... Uh, we, we gave her, them, uh, some, um, maybe you have heard about the Samaritan Purse. Uh, Samaritan Purse is a Bill Graham program that they are going to give uh, boxes. And in that box, they put a lot of different candies, different, even some of them, they have some bills, uh, dollars, different things. They put it there. But uh, this, little, uh, this little girl, she was receiving that box. And when she was receiving that box, she couldn't believe what she had. And it was hers, you know. Said, it was showing to my wife, said, look what they gave me. You know what? Because that is something that maybe they don't have. But if we care of them, then they are going to never forget that one day they received their boxes. That is in the church. That is in the church. All of those children, they received the the, the, the little box from the Samaritan purse. And we made a big fiesta, you know. Uh, we have even the wolf there for the children. We got sliders. We got different things, a lot of food too. But you know what? They will never forget that there was one day when someone showed mercy to them. That's what we need to do. Show mercy to them. Continue. The next one. And Psalms uh, 61, 67 verse 1, be merciful. That is what the Lord is asking to us. And there's a scripture that really touched my heart. It says, in judgment, in judgment, mercy always wins. Uh, read Joel 2, 3, 2, 13. It says, so render your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, kindness. And he relents from doing harm. When I read this, it really touches my heart. Because that is something that is needed to be presented in the Christian churches. It's very, very easy to judge people. It's very easy to put a lot of burdens upon the people. And you know what? The Lord never came to put burdens on us he came to just only clear the, the the road and make it easy for us that's what he says and even when we deserve maybe to be killed we deserve the punishment he said i'm not going to do that what i'm going to do is just only to have mercy in him he's slow to anger 
and great kindness. My question is, how we are like Jesus? Are you slow in anger? Oh, my. <laughs> we in Mexico, we said, the red light turns into green, and it is a second when someone is pushing the horn. Boop, 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 hey! And it is incredible, you know, because, you know, in Mexico, there, were, there was a time we, we don't have guns. We normally don't have guns there in Mexico. But right now, there is a lot of people that right now you cannot be discussing with them because immediately they are going to take the, the gun and they can kill you. That has been. But you know what? Because the people are anger. They have a lot, uh, a lot of anger. And, well, may the Lord help us to be kind. To be kind with the people. When we are kind, they are going to change quicker and easier than when you are presenting just only anger. You need to be kind. And James 2.13 says, For judgment is without, is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. And that's what we want. We want mercy. Yeah, we can judge, but you know what? It's not easy. It's not uh, the best way, but we need to be like as Christ. Uh, I'm just only going to refer, maybe you can read it in your home, but Nehemiah chapter 9, you will see uh, a group of people that all the time they were, you know, going into different uh, scene and committing sin, one and another and another sin, uh, and there were people that they didn't deserve mercy. You had the people there. They didn't accept mercy, but you know what? They sin again and again and again and again. And it's easy to judge the people there in Israel. But the problem is, what about me? Maybe I am the same because I'm not better than anybody. And yeah, praise God, I'm here with you. But don't ask that lady to tell you how I am at home. Please don't talk to her. I praise God that he's, she's here and she cannot understand English. <laughs> That's why she cannot talk to you. But please don't ask her because she has a lot of ideas. <laughs> she was talking with Greg and the wife and sending messages. message said, when he tells this story, he got very upset and said, come on, don't say that. <laughs> but you know what? We are not better than anybody. But if God has been very merciful with us, it's the same thing that we have to do it. They commit sin again and again, but has mercy on them again and again. God wants us to show the world his mercy, and uh, does he uh, uh, does be the, the ambassadors of the love of, of the Lord that he has give, been given to us. That's what we have to be. People that only have mercy on everybody and that we can love everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter the, the idiom that you can speak. I, I, I really praise God for this church because you, are, you have been showing me mercy and you are allowing me to speak even when my English is very, it's very terrible. I know that. With your silence, you are telling me more than with many words. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. And Psalms 60, 67 1 says that he, God is going to bless us. That's what he says. God, be merciful to us and bless us. And I want to talk something about the blessing. In the Old Testament, the blessing was only rain, was crops, was cattle, and also was to have money. That was in the Old Testament. The people can say, I am blessed because he had all these things. And in the New Testament is something interesting because the book of Acts in chapter 3, verse 25 and 26 talks in a different way. And I'm going to read that because uh, that, is, that scripture is very, is, is very important to us. Let me find it. Oh, my goodness. I said Acts. Acts what? 3? Okay. 3.25. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and I need to look. Um, okay, the new King James. Well, it says in uh, Acts 3.25, 
You are sons of the prophets and the covenant with God uh, made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. But listen to what it says in num number 26. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, send him to bless you. Okay, he's talking about the blessing. Send him to bless you in turning away one of you from, every one of you, pardon, in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. In the New Testament, there's something that happens here because the Lord is going to take us from that kind of, uh, you know, uh, of problems that we have, and he's going to change that life, and that's what he's calling that he has blessed us in that way. And I'm going to give you three different testimonies. Number one, the first testimony, I want to talk to you about Omar. Maybe you know him. Some of you know him. Christy maybe knows him because he was, uh, when she was there, he was, he was there. Maybe Danny too. Uh, Omar is, is a tall guy. But let me tell you, before he, got Christ, he was Christian, he was in drugs. It was a tremendous guy. He was, you know, without loving God, nothing he wanted to do with God. And the Lord rescued him. The Lord changed his life. And right now, Omar is working to have a visa here in the States to work as a pastor here in the States. That is a blessing. That is a blessing. Lives that are changed. The second one I want to tell you is Roberto. You know who is Roberto? Right now he's my pastor. Roberto is my son-in-law. But I want to tell you very few things about his life. When he was born, his uncle killed his father. They were drinking, and one day his uncle tell, told to his father, Hey, you are not a man. He said, yes, I am a man. He said, if you really are a man, well, here's the gun. Shoot. And you know what? His uncle killed his father. Because of that, they put him on jail. And on jail, his uncle was dead. With 18 times, they put uh, a knife on him. And that's the way they kill him. Many of his uh, aunts are working in prostitution. Many of the family are uh, selling drugs. And in that background, terrible background, the Lord rescued his mother. She suffered a lot of anxiety. She said that sometimes she was on a, in a bus, and, and suddenly she, she, she has this feeling that someone is after us. Someone is after us. And he took the two, 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 two children and one, uh, one girl, and they took him. They put them inside the, the house. They put them uh, under the bed. No, nobody can see them. They, they, it was a terrible way that they were living. You know what? And this guy, the Lord touched his life. Right now, he is my pastor. And I praise God because, well, there are some backgrounds that you don't want in your family. But, well, it's okay. Right now, he's my pastor. But you know what? He has changed, totally changed. And I praise God for that. Right now, uh, I had a grandson from him, and he really loves that grandson. And he really is, you know, his heart is with my, my grandson and also my daughter. Everybody of us, we know our daughters and our sons. And, well, I praise God because my daughter uh, has that, that, uh, that, uh, that husband because, oh, sometimes I want to kill my daughter too. <laughs> but praise God for Roberto. <laughs> and be, be praying for him that, you know, the Lord continue blessing my daughter's life with him because he is a blessing to her, okay? And the third one is Felix Bermudez. Felix Bermudez, I met him last November. Uh, it was a group from uh, for the people from Florida. They went to Chiapas, and we have a big team. It was 20 American people. And in that group of 20 American people, Felix Flores was, was with that group. He is a Puerto Rican, but he was in the Italian mafia. And uh, 
it was a terrible, terrible testimony that he was sharing. He came back for the Reyes, the day of Reyes that we were giving the boxes. He was there. He dressed up as a king. But you know what? Right now, he's totally changed. He was part of the mafia, and he said, I, 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 I know that maybe if, I, if the Lord doesn't come to rescue me, I'm, I'm sure that maybe I will be dead. And that is truth. But you know what? That is a blessing to see lives change. My question is, how they are going to see your life? Are you still the same cursy person that you are cursing all the time? Are you mad all the time? Are you depressed all the time? Or you are still drinking? Looking for doors that instead of, you know, going to Jesus, you are looking just only ways that you want to escape from that. What is the testimony that you have? Because the blessing is that they will see your life and they will see a different one than the one that they used to know. You know what? I praise God because when I was in high school, not before, the middle school, I was terrible. Really, I was terrible. I was the pastor's son. But even when I was a pastor's son, you know what? I was so timid when I was in the elementary school. And they were kicking me all the time. Until my brother, it was in the third year, or the, yeah, it was the third year, when I was crying to my brother, said, you know what, this guy is kicking me. I said, the next time that he's going to kick you, I'm going to do it then for you. Don't be crying. You have to defend yourself. And you know what? I started doing that. And I like it. <laughs> that is the worst thing. I'm not too brave, you know. But I want to tell you something. I'm sorry. The first time that I did it, this, was, this guy was peeing. I'm sorry to say this in a little bit. He was peeing. And while he was peeing, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't have to do anything with theology, you, but I'm sorry. But he was peeing, and then I came and kicked him on the back. And when he turned around, I put him the second here. You know what? And since that day, I really like it. <laughs> when I went, uh, I finished my high school, and then I decided to go to study theology. All the people that they knew me in my hometown, they said, Eliseo to be a pastor. Ha, 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 I can't believe it. Because they knew who I was. But you know what? That is a blessing. The Lord has blessed our lives. It's not just only economically, and I praise God for that, because the Lord has been good to us too. But you know what? The greatest blessing is a life change. That is the greatest blessing. How is our life? We need to show that we are different, that the Lord has blessed us, not because we have a lot of cars and we have a lot of houses. No, we are blessed because our life has been changed and our life is given, is given testimony and we are serving in a better way to many other people. There are some pictures here that I'm going to show you. Number one, the first one here to, my, to, my, to your left. Uh, we are there in Comitán and I want to tell you, the cartel uh, came to uh, a name Comalapa and uh, also... In Chicomucelo, and they have been, you know, the churches, even in the churches, they go and they count how many churches, how many seats do you have, and you have to pay 10 pesos for each one of the people that will be there in the church. They went with a family. He is a pastor for, for that church. They went to the family, and in one of the houses, they said, How many men are here? I said, Well, it's my husband and my two sons. I said, Okay. Uh, uh, this is a rifle for you, and you are going to fight for us. And they said, sorry, we cannot do it. I said, why not? We are Christians. He is a pastor. My, my sons are also Christians, so we cannot do it. You have to fight for us. I said, no, we are not going to fight. We are not going to shoot to anybody. I said, no. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. They killed three men in the, in the same house. And they have been in a tremendous needs. But you know what? We are blessed, as the pastor said, to be a blessing to others. We gave them some pantries. You call it pantries? Boxes with a lot of 
uh, merchandise for eating, frijoles and uh, beans, sorry, no frijoles, <laughs> beans and some other things we gave to them. But you know what? That is the way that we are helping them. And not only that, churches from here, from the States, we had connection and also Pastor John sent an offering to that church. You can see that church. That's it's over 3,000 people. And, and the most tremendous thing is that that church is back. You know why? Because the Lord has been blessing to us. That is the blessing. The people, now they see that church and say, how can you build this church in little town? Where do you have the money from? And you know what they said? It is just only because of God. The pastor of that church, let me tell you, the way that he purchased the property, the land, it was when there was a guy there in that little town that he had a daughter that she was demon-possessed. And she cannot be delivered. She cannot be delivered neither with medicine, medicine neither with the witchcraft doctors. She couldn't do it anyway. But someone told that man, you know what? There is a pastor. You take your daughter to the pastor, he's going to heal her. They went, they prayed, and the, the pastor had the revelation and said, you know what? There is witchcraft in your house. They went, they searched in the house, and yeah, there was a lot of, uh, a hen, uh, caught it, a black hen, and some other things, you know, crazy things. And uh, they prayed, and uh, he asked the lady, you open the door for these demon things. And she, she said, yeah, I had my father and I had my mother. That's why that was the door that was open. Well, they start praying for her, and uh, she started recovering. The pastor invited the whole family and said, we need to fast, and we need to ask God to, to completely hear her. And they start fasting, and they start praying, and in less than eight days, she was healed. Yeah. And the man told, I know that you have been looking for a property for your church. And the pastor said, yes, we are looking for a property. He said, why don't you accept that? I'll give it to you for the church. And you know what? It's a little town. And it's so interesting, that story. Because they started <laughs> in a little house. You know, it was very little house. It was more or less like this from here to there only. And in that little house, made just only with pieces of good, uh, it was a Catholic church. And when the Catholics go to do their services, they need to bring the Virgin, the saints, and everything. They put it there, and they, you know, everything what they do. And when the Christians go, then they take the Virgin, they take it home, and then they were the Christians. But there was something. The Christians start growing more than the Catholics. And the man was the, the priest assistant. I don't know how to say that. But he was assisting the priest. So... He, he was the, the first one that, get, uh, that, get, that was Christian. And then they started dealing. and said, you know what? Why don't we sell our church? It was not a church. Why don't we sell the church to you? Because you are growing. I said, yeah. And you know what? They bought that property. And they enlarged they enlarge the, the temple. They make it bigger. But they have two or three different services on Sunday. And they couldn't put the whole people together. So that's why they decided to buy that property. That man gave the property, but they start building. And I praise God, you know what? Because a church from Kentucky, they, gave, they paid the whole roof for them. And I praise God because that comes from America. That's come from you. And you know what? Right now, everybody oh, it says, how can you do it? It, it, yeah, you are a big church, but you don't have all that money to, be, to have that. You know what? It's not because of money. It's because there are blessed people that the Lord is going to bless also economically to them. Okay, let's continue. In the chapter 1 also says a different thing. Not only to be blessed, but also it says that the, 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 the face of God needs to be shined on them. And this is my last point. He said, be merciful to us and bless us. And the third one. And cause, and, and cause his face to shine upon us. That is the, the key point that I want to finish. Philippians 2, 14 and 15 says, do all things without complaining. 
and disputing. Well, I know that this, uh, this doesn't happen here, and praise God for that. <laughs> Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of the uh, crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. That is the call for us, to shine as lights, lights in the world. There are some signs of Jesus in us. If we do not have intimacy with God, there will be no shine. The only way that you will shine is when you have that intimacy with God. If you don't have that, you know what? We can force many things. You can become, you know, and, you know, and, and try to imitate, for example, what pastor says. Oh, yeah, we're going to have the victory and, and move here and do this. But you know what? That is just only external because the people will know if you have been with God or you haven't been with God. That is only because of intimacy. Mark 9, 2 and 3 says, Now, after six days, Jesus uh, took Peter, James, and John and led them up. Uh, on a high mountain apart themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became shining exceedingly white like snow. And you know what? These things only happen when you go and you have that intimacy with God. And this is my invitation to you. I'm just almost finishing, but my invitation to you is, you know what? We don't need to be religious. God is calling this church to really be merciful, God is calling this church to really be blessed, not only economically. Yeah, it's very good. But the, the biggest blessing that you may have is that your life is changed. That even your wife, your husband can say, this guy really is a Christian. He used to be acting like this. And right now he's acting in a different way. That is the real blessing. And the third one is that your, that your face can show God. What they, are do, what they are seeing in you. I know sometimes I, I lose control of myself and, and they, maybe they can see demons on me. But that, that is not a plan. As they can see demons on me, also they need to see God in me. And most of the time they have to see God in me. And it's just only with that intimacy. God calls us to be with him. Look what the Bible says in Mark 3, 13 to 15. He went up to the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. And let me tell you, you are that one of those. He wanted to be close to him. That's why he called you. That's why even when it is cold outside, you are here. Because he called you, you have an appointment with him. And he said, I want you to be in this time. Even with a broken English but I want a message for you. I want to receive that message because I want to be in intimacy with you. He called to himself the ones that he wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed 12 that they meet, may be with him and that he may send them out to preach and to have power and heal sickness to cast out demons you know what that is the main purpose some people think that the purpose for being in a church is to have a big ministry let me tell you that is not true that is not true because the lord can do it the way he wanted the purpose is for you to be with him in intimacy in intimacy it doesn't matter he's going to do it the way he wanted he can use even angels. He's going to do it. But you know what? He wants the intimacy with you. He wants to see that in you. Something different. Just only to be with me. Just only to be close to him. When we are close to him, when we are in intimacy with him, you know, we know his secrets. We can feel his heart. And we know what will happen because the Lord is going to show it to you. I want to see a picture. <laughs> I love this picture. You know them. <laughs> Don't you? <sighs> yeah, 
Yes, you know them. But you know what? I praise God for these people and for this church. Because you really has been a blessing to us. We can see God in these faces. We can see God, how he has been moving, doing maybe crazy things. But you know what? The people are seeing something different in all these guys that you have sent us. I don't know if the pastor told you what he did the last time he was there. He was preaching and suddenly he said, I want to baptize you. And he turns to me and said, can we baptize him? I said, yeah, maybe the next time that they have baptisms, it can be a month or two months. He said, no, I want to baptize him today. It was a cold day. Maybe not that cold, but it was a cold day. I said, I want to baptize him today. I said, you want to be baptized? I said, yes, I want to be baptized. Who else wants to be baptized? And when suddenly I saw, my goodness, there's a lot of people that want to be baptized. I said, well, we are going to do it. We, I, I asked the pastor, the, the, the pastor in that church said, how can we do it? Is there a place that we can do it? And he started thinking, no, there's no place. At the end, they said, okay, there's one place. But the word it is cold. <laughs> but you know what? These gringos, we call them gringos there. <laughs> These crazy gringos, they said, we are going to do it. Let's eat and see you in four hours. I think it was four hours. Let's eat and see you in four hours. They went to find something because they didn't have even shorts or something. We went to a, a Walmart and they bought some things. And when we were there, they said, are we going to do it? And the pastor John said, are you going to do it? No, sorry, I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? When they saw the, the water, instead of touching, they just only jumped into the water. And you know what? The people in Chiapas can see Jesus in their lives. What are the people around you looking? What do they see? They see that you came to church just only to go back to your, to your house and eat by yourself, or you are helping some others that are in a need. You know what? Because all of us, we have needs. If I explain you the needs that I have, I can make you cry for me. But the purpose is not just only to center in myself. The, pump, the purpose is that I have been blessed right now to be blessed to some other people. This is the last one that I want to show you. And I'm finished with this. Thank you very much for your patience. We are called to show Jesus. In Psalms uh, uh, chapter 3, and uh, I mean, uh, chapter 67, the verse 3 and the verse 5 says, Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. That is the purpose. Not to see us. That the people can see God in us. That may be the main purpose for us. And put it in your heart. Lord, I don't want them to see me. I want them to see you. How we are representing Jesus in this world. The people need to see Jesus. You know what? Sometimes the only Bible that they will have is your life. And my question is how we are presenting Jesus. That was the, the purpose of this psalm. He said, let the people praise you. Oh God, let the people praise you. That when they see you, they'll say, oh, praise God for his life. Oh, praise God for what he gave me. Oh, praise God for the word, that encouragement. Yeah, we have all problems. All of us, we have problems. But you know what? The people doesn't want to know our problems. The people want to know Christ. The people want to know that the, someone healed you. The people wants to know that someone changed your life. The people wants to know that whenever you were in a lack, the Lord provided for you. That's what the people wants to know. Everybody has a lot of problems. And sometimes we focus just only, oh yeah, the problems we have in Mexico. Oh yes, the problems we have here in the States. Oh, we are running to be a communist uh, country. Oh, a lot of crazy things we are talking just only about. Stop that. Start talking about how the Lord has changed us. 
how he show his mercy on me how he he shining on my face and yeah I was maybe a depressed person but praise God I went to church and you know what my life has been changed praise God I went to church and the, that pain that I had right now I'm healed for the grace of God that is what the people wants to know yeah. the verse says seven says God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him it's only when that when the people will know him when we when they will see that the lord has blessed us we are blessed to be a blessing yes. i finish with this verse genesis 12 2 it says i will make you a great nation and this is a blessing for you church this is a blessing for you take it personal the lord says to you i will bless you and you will be a great nation. I will bless you and maybe and make you a great name. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Don't worry about, about blessing them or cursing them. Yeah, there are people that they don't like us. I know that. But you know what? I will bless the ones that bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. And... In you, all the families on the earth shall be blessed. Shall be blessed. That is what the Lord wants for us today. But you know what? The first thing is to be close to him. And maybe you are here and maybe, you know, you have been running after, uh, uh, after God. You are not running for him. You are going somewhere, trying to find different doors. But the Lord brought you today here so you can reconnect with him. Why don't you put your, your life in accordance with him? And said, Lord, I'm sorry. I tried to do it my own way and I failed. But you today said, Lord, I want you to do it in your way. Have mercy on me. Show your face on me. And if you give that opportunity to God, you know what? you will be blessed I want to ask is there someone here that wants to say well I haven't given my life to Jesus or maybe you said I gave my life to Jesus but I've been looking for some other things but I write today I want to reconnect with him he's inviting you to come and to sell to tell him Lord here I am I want that reconnection with you I, yeah I have a lot of problems but you will take care of the problems. What I have to take care of is to be in a good relationship with you. I want to open this altar. You want to come and accept Christ? Or, you know, may ride with him and to tell him, Lord, I want to be okay with you. If you are here and you want to have that reconnection, why don't you come to the front? We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Amen. I'm finished. This, is time, this time is for you. If you want, come to the floor. Come to the front. And we will pray for you. And we will ask the Lord to help you. And to change many things. And maybe you want to do it in your own. But you cannot do it. And you will never do it. Maybe you want to have mercy on someone. But you cannot do it on your own. It's only when you receive the mercy of God. That you can show mercy to some others. It's only when you are blessed by God. That you can bless some others. And it's only when you are in that connection with God that you also will be uh, pre presenting uh, Christ in, in some other people. If someone is here, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I open the altar. Is there someone? Or maybe you don't want to come to the front. Don't worry if you don't want to come to the front. But I want everybody in this church, do you want to be blessed by the Lord? You want to, be, to have the mercy of God? And also you want... The Lord to be shining in your face. Why don't you stand up and we will pray together. Let's pray together. And tell him, Lord, I want you to be here with me. And I want you to make me that servant that you want. And the people know that you are really the God of everybody. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for all these people in this church. Thank you for everybody that has been here and is receiving your word today. Lord, I ask to continue blessing Faith Center. 
Thank you for Pastor John. Thank you for Pastor Jeff. Thank you for the vision that you have put in their hearts. And Lord, we ask to bless these people. Bless them with a different style of life. That the world can see how you have been moving to them. And you have been blessing to them. And how this church is showing mercy to many people that, yeah, they don't deserve. But you have been giving mercy to them and they are merciful with us with the rest of the people lord i want you to continue putting your shine shining upon these people help them that they can show you your life among the family and among all the places that they are and the people will see and bless you and everybody is going to praise you because you are the god of faith center I praise for these people, and I praise for Pastor John, for Pastor Jeff, and I ask your blessing, ask your blessings for everybody. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much.